So now the next part is edge reduction. Edge reduction is a little uh, complicated because they're not edges of the same color. You see these are the same color. They're easy to put in because you can visualize them. Same thing with this. These edges are the same color. Well, this is a little difficult because these edges are of different colors. Just like these. These are all edges that, that got reduced. So here's what I would do. To reduce the edges, we have to coordinate it with the centers. So you see purple here, but the purple has to be by a purple and orange or purple and gray. So what I would do is just kind of do it layer by layer here. So let's find a purple and orange. Here's an orange here. Now it doesn't matter if it's upside down because that can easily be fixed. So to place edges, take this, and you have to have a sacrificial lamb up here that's going to be substituted as it comes down here. This comes down over here to create this proper edge, move it out of the way, put this one in its place, move it in, and move it back up. Now what I would do at this point, because we, we need to know to not destroy this edge, and it's hard to remember every edge that you put back in, I would just move this up here to where it's supposed to be. Uh, it's kind of crisscrossed here, so let's go ahead and align that. So I'm just going to keep that here. Let's do the other one. Let's do the orange and red. Well here's a red. Find any orange. Any orange will do. So there's an orange over here. Well, let's get the right orange. Eh, it doesn't really matter. There's a lot of equivalencies here. Move this over here. So same thing. This will come down to here. Turn, 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 and up. Now let's go ahead and put this in. Now what you could do is line this up with the proper center too, but it really doesn't matter at this point. Uh, I would actually do that because we're going to have to put these in, and it might be useful to have these uh, oriented. Now, I'm not trying to solve the edges. I'm not trying to make the cross. What I'm trying to do is keep accounting, uh, keep an account of what I've already done, what I put in. So I've got this. I can put this up to here. But let's coordinate it with the center too. Again, just to keep account of things. So super cute style. Put this in. Now I'll do the red and silver. So I'm going to find any red and silver, keeping in mind that this is up over here. Well, here's a silver. So let's find a red. Well, here's a red and silver over here. Every so often you, you'll get a situation like that, where it's already in. So this is already in. Move it up. Silver and purple. Here's another silver. So I'm just going to find any purple, except for this one, because I know I've already used that. So here's a purple over here. So I'm going to move this into position. And I've got to make sure that if I'm going to move this down here, this one can be sacrificed. Now I see that this is a green and yellow. Well, I have a green and yellow here, so I don't want to use this one, actually. I want to use any one except for this one. So I'm just going to save this for later. How about this one over here? Well, blue and white. There's a blue and white here. I don't want to use that one either. And this one is already used. So this one I don't want to use. This one I don't want to use. And this one I don't want to use. How about blue and green? Yeah, I got one here. So a lot of these have already been accidentally reduced. So, gosh, that's easier than I thought. How about this? Well, silver and white. I don't see any of those. So I'm just going to move this into position like this. Put this over to here. Now just move this over here. Turn, 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 turn. Now you don't have to keep track of the relative position of everything. Um, if what you did you know doesn't disrupt anything, you can easily start from scratch and get everything back. So let's actually do that. So this is in now. Red and silver. We'll get this back over here. So these should have been protected. Uh, white and or silver and purple. Move this in like so. Move this in. It doesn't matter if it's if it's not quite in. And this is fine over here. So these are all fine. Uh, so I've I've achieved my goals. What I might do? Let's just go ahead and put this in in the proper position. Now you may find that things have accidentally been reduced. So, so uh, what we can do is we can actually start coordinating these guys here. We can coordinate the top. So here's a blue and white, so we're done with that. This is okay too, so we're done with that. These two don't really belong with each other. 
Because this is rotated correctly, I can start coordinating these. So this is okay. So I don't wanna move this because I see these two are here. Purple and white, well, there's a purple and white here. So this is fine. This is fine. Now I have two blue and whites. I don't need two blue and whites. So one of these have got to go. So let's keep track of all those that uh, we don't need. We want a green and red, so I want this. So these two. Do I really want to destroy this? Well, I don't want to destroy this. I want to destroy, I don't, and I don't want to destroy this either. Here's a red. I don't need a red and yellow, so this, this one can be sacrificed. Green and blue, not over here. Green and yellow, not over here. So this green and silver. So these two guys don't really make any sense. Uh, what else? Well, this, this has a place. How about purple and white? Any purple and whites I should know about? Yep, purple and white is over here. So what I might do just to make sure I'm keeping inventory is I'm just going to start moving things in. Just placing edges right now, just, just to keep inventory. Um, it's going to be hard to kind of keep track of everything. So here's a orange and a yellow. Let's just move that down into here. So I'm just doing the algorithm to place this to here. Again, this is three by three strategy. Turn, 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 and turn. So that's good. How about green and uh, red? I don't have a green and red. So these guys, I guess, can be potentially swapped, as can these guys. I'm looking for blue and gray, so these two can swap. I need to put this in with this. So I'm gonna move this over to here, and this is gonna come down to here. And I'm gonna sacrifice one of these guys. Kinda of mess it up a little bit here, but that's okay. So this comes down, so I've got my red and green, turn, 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 and up. Okay. Now we can kind of take inventory. At this point, we might even be able to just start solving it. But let's kind of put things back in. This will come here, this will come here. We'll move this one back in here and this back in over here. So we've got all these lined up. And now let's, now that we've got all these lined up, what I'm gonna do is just take a look and see if we have everything we need here. So we have a blue and gray, green and yellow, blue and white, green and red, which comes over here. So to Here's that we have everything that we need. How about white and purple? Is there actually a white and purple? Yeah, over here. Okay, so now we have all the centers reduced and all the edges reduced, and surprisingly, it still doesn't look like we've done a lot of solving, but we've actually got our cross over here. So this is one of the few puzzles where it still doesn't look like we're close to the solve, even though all these edges are reduced and all the centers are, all the centers are reduced um, also. So edges reduced and centers reduced. So this is a calibrated puzzle. It's just a matter of putting things in. So let's go ahead and put this uh, purple corner in. Turn, turn, turn. Orange is down here. Nope, it's up over here. So let's put the gray in. That's not over here either. So let's put the red in. This red will come over here. Put it right under where it needs to be. R I D I R D. Silver. Still in the wrong place, so let's just move this down. Now let's move this by the orange. R I D I R D, which frees up the silver to go R I D I R D. Okay, now we're starting to look like we're getting more solved because you can see our first side is done and it's actually starting to look more like a first side. We turn this upside down and we start to put these guys in. Remember, this is still a four by four, so we're not done with all parodies. Uh, here's a green and blue. This belongs up here. Green and red belongs down here. So to move this from here down to the left, Put this just above that and do U I L I U L U F U I F I. And there, that is over there. 
okay? Orange and uh, yellow is gonna come down like this, same algorithm. So this is typical middle layer solving. And turn, so this is good over here. This is already good over here. So this is all in over here. Now the last layer. What do we have in store for us here? First thing I would do is coordinate the centers. We spent all that time making sure all the centers were coordinated right, so we might as well use that. Now what about these? Well, we want to see if it's what's upside down and what's right side up, because the next step is flipping these in the proper configuration. Well, what we can do to measure that is we take a look at this, and you can see this is upside down, because this is not coordinated correctly. So upside down, what about this? This is right side up. I'm just gonna put this here so I remember that. So right side up, this is upside down. What about this one? This is also upside down. So we have upside down, upside down, right side up, and this one. Two upside downs, one right side up. This one should be right side up unless there's parity. And it is upside down. So basically, right side up, upside down, upside down, upside down. So we have a typical four layer parity, the same way that you would get with this one. So just to kind of show what I'm talking about with that, this is the only thing that's right side up, the rest are upside down. I'm just gonna do an F, R, U, R, I, U, I, F, I to better demonstrate what's going on here. Right side up, right side up, right side up, upside down. So it's like someone took this and plucked it away, um, turned it upside down, which you're not supposed to be able to do. That's like taking a three by three and turning one upside down. You're not supposed to have that. So this is one of the typical parodies of a four by four. To get out of this, we need to be able to rotate this um, uh, across. We need to be able to swap these two over here. Um, to do that, we do the Red Bull algorithm. To do the Red Bull algorithm, we basically will call this right, this left, and do 2R, 2B, 2U, L, 2 up, RI, 2 up, R, 2 up, 2F, R, 2F, and finally LI, 2B, 2R. Okay, the end result of that is none of these should have changed. That's the joy of that algorithm. And all of these should be rotated right side up. We can tell that this is right side up over here. This is right side up. This is right side up. And this is right side up. This was the very first utilization of the Red Bull algorithm that I ever did. Now all these are okay, but um, it's not supposed to be this way. It has to be coordinated with the center. So we've got out of the uh, normal four by four parity, but what about a supercube parity? Well, the way that that would work is let's gear the centers. All these centers are correct. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the uh, R U R U R two U R I, which will move these guys around. This will stay the same, the one that's in front of me, and these guys will all come around. Now, what would be the best scenario is if you have one that's in and three that's out, because then I can put the one that's in in front of me and rotate the rest of the three, but every so often you get two in and two out. We'll show you how to deal with that. So R U R I U R two U R I. So we can see this is in and uh oh, this is in. So this is a supercube parity. If it was just one that's in and these three were out, well, that's great. Just do that same algorithm again and eventually they'll all rotate in and all the edges will be fine. But in this case, you don't. You have the, uh, basically the supercube parity, which you'll get with any kind of four by four supercube. What you wanna do with this is you need to do some swapping of two sides. You can't swap two uh, you, you can't do an odd layer swap, so you can't swap them both as a single edge. You're going to have to get into the, your reduction a little bit. Now, the way to do this is go ahead and take one of those that have to be swapped and do the algorithm, which will keep this here until this is just opposite this. You want to put the two opposite. So do it until white and blue is over here. R U R I U R to U R I. Do it again. R U R I. You are to you. All right, okay. So 
In this situation, what you want to do is you want to swap these two. But you can't do the usual swapping, the 2U, 2R, 2F, 2U, because if you do that, you're going to cause rotation over here. It's just how that comes out. So this is what I call the URF algorithm. I showed you the Red Bull algorithm. This is the URF because that's what it feels like. It feels like, well, URF with this because it's a long, longish kind of algorithm and it's a scenario where it seems almost impossible to get out of. But it's actually not a bad algorithm when you think about it because it goes through the URF pattern. To uh, uh, flip flop these two, you do the algorithm to U, to R, to F, to U, to U. Well, this follows the same pattern, URF. What you're going to do is you're going to start off doing a middle UI and always alternate eyes uh, counterclockwise with clockwise. As long as you can remember URF and alternating clockwise with counterclockwise, then you'll be able to get yourself through it. So because this is a counter situation, start off with a counterclockwise rotation. So it's going to be a UI, but it's going to be a middle UI. So that's going to be a UI, then we're alternating. So R, F, I. Now it's a top, just reverse it, U, R, I, F. So again, we're alternating clockwise with counterclockwise. Now we do the bridge. In every song there's a bridge, well, here's a bridge. Then once again with the middle, you do a U, and then a D, D, and then finish it up with F, R, U's, but starting off with an F, I. So F, I, and as we're alternating R, then UI, then reverse it back, F, R, I, and stop there, and just do a middle D back, D. And what that'll do is without changing any of this, it swap these two without rotating the center. And now everything should be fine, and as you can see, it really is. Because this is where it needs to be, but this isn't this isn't, and this isn't, and that's exactly what you wanted to do. Even if you didn't quite have it in that position, you can have faith that if you just do the algorithm once, one of these are going to be in. So it's going to be R, U, R, I, U, R, 2U, R, I, and as you can see, all of the edges are now in. So that is basically it with the parodies. This is among the hardest of the four layer mods to solve because you have every kind of potential parody that you can have, um, including the, the issues with the uh, centers. But here's the payoff. The corners are a breeze. Corners, you don't have to worry about any kind of rotation because they're the same everywhere around. And you don't have to worry about false equivocation because unlike with this, you've got different corners of different uh, sizes. You've got ones that are just the same that are equal on all sides, but you have these that do have rotational specificity. So this does not, this does not, but because these do, you can have a situation where one appears to be rotated out when it just means that you have to rotate these. So this is the one that's in, because we prepared for that, put this to the right side and then just orient these around, but you don't have to, um, or permute these around rather, but you don't have to orient them. So that's U, R, U, I, L, I, U, R, I, U, I, L, and that's all it took. There it is, and now your puzzle is solved. So on the surface of it, it seems like a simple four layer mod, which, which it is, but underneath it comes with it the characteristics of four layer mods with all the parodies that happen with that. So within this is the concepts of how to deal with even layer puzzles and, and four layer mods. And that's what's fun about these. So from such humble beginnings, starting off with a 4x4, four four, which every one of us, having moved from the 3x3 three three to the 4x4, four four, experienced the trials and tribulations of parody and what that actually means. And if that wasn't enough, spurring from this, uh, from an evolutionary standpoint, you've got the supercube, which introduced the concept of specificity of the centers and, and further parodies. And then from there you had others that uh, became shape mods. And with shape mods came the... Uh, possibility of having shape shifting. Well, this does not shape shift. This does not shape shift. And this fantastic Tetrakis, can't get enough of this one, doesn't shape shift either. Nor did what we just do shape shift. But then add to that the shape shifters. This is a cubic shape shifter. And then you have your, well, this isn't a shape shifter, but it's a fascinating circle cube. I've always been partial to circle cubes. 
and this isn't a shapeshifter either. Then from there you've got the dodecahedrons, um, the hexagonal dipyramid, the incredible ghost puzzle, the sliced dodecahedron, and of course Trafim's triumphant um, megamorphings. So from such humble beginnings, we have ourselves with a variety of different characteristics, all of which showing this fascinating characteristic of parody. But if you look at it close enough, you can find strategies to get through that. Do you have equivalency of centers or don't you? If you do, get ready for a possible corner parody or an apparent corner parody that can happen and make sure you put your corners in before you finish the last center. If you don't, don't worry about it. If it's flipped, just flip it and rotate things anyway. Once you have discovered parity and have conquered parity, then you can say that you have completely conquered the four layer mods. But if you really want to completely conquer it, how about doing a four by four without parity? So here's my challenge to you guys. Is it possible to scramble a four by four, a four layer puzzle, and solve it where there is no parity? Is it possible, in other words, to avoid parity completely? Now, if you listen closely to what I was saying at the first part of this, uh, this series, at, at, at the first part of this video, at, at the very beginning, I gave you a hint as to where the parity comes from and how it can potentially be avoided. So. The answer is yes, you can actually scramble this and solve it without any parity whatsoever. And my question to you is how do you do it? And if I get enough answers with that, I'll show you in the next video how to solve a 4x4 without worrying about any parity at all. Tell me what you think. Set this over here. Thanks for watching.